Yang Yang is a character you either really like or don't care for at all, despite having one of the coolest movesets in the game. Her low base stats makes her an easy skip for most players. Even in the support role, most will likely pick someone like Alto over her due to his attack buffing capabilities. But in today's video, we will be taking a look at our first companion in Jinjo, the outrider, Yang Yang. In combat, Yang utilizes the arrow element, a sword, and stacks of melody to devastating effect. She gains one stack of melody after each full rotation of her basic attack, one stack on Zypher Song hit, one stack after her resonant skill hits, and lastly, one stack after her intro skill. A maximum of three stack can be held at any time. Her basic attack has four sequences and generates one stack of melody on the fourth sequence. Her heavy attack consumes 25 stamina to deliver a piercing strike to the locked on target. Her dodge counter can be performed by using a basic attack after a successful dodge and will allow her to thrust forward to bridge the distance between her and her target, dealing light arrow damage. The extension of her heavy attack Zephyr Song can also be performed by using a basic attack as a follow-up to her heavy attack or a dodge counter and will generate one stack of melody on hit. While airborne, she can consume 30 stamina to perform a plunge attack dealing arrow damage to nearby targets. Her resonance skill, Zephyr Domain, allows her to create a small vortex that gathers nearby targets to its center dealing arrow damage. At resonance chain zero, this statement almost feels like an exaggeration because both the grouping capability and the range of this skill are fairly poor and requires you to be extremely close to the target to see any real results. While in possession of three stacks of melody, her forte circuit echoing feathers will change her charge attack into stormy strike, sending herself and enemies hit airborne. While in possession of three stacks of melody and airborne, Using a basic attack will trigger her Forte Circuit's Feather Release technique, consuming all melody stacks to deal massive damage to the surrounding targets, delivering a final blow upon landing. Her ultimate liberation, Wind Spirals, cost 100 energy to cast and will summon a cyclone that gathers nearby enemies, dealing massive arrow damage to the surrounding foes. Again, this gathering ability is fairly weak and will require you to pretty much land a direct hit on your targets. Her passives, Compassion, will allow her to recover 30 stamina after a mid-air feather release skill is cast, while Lazuline Mercy increases her arrow damage by 8% for 8 seconds after her intro skill is cast. Her intro skill Cerulean Song will deal arrow damage to the surrounding targets sending them airborne. Her outro skill Whispering Breeze will allow the on-field resonator to gain 4 resonance energy per second for 5 seconds. In co-op, this is extended to nearby teammates. As most of you guys can probably tell, Yang Yang is a fairly easy resonator to play. The main things to keep in mind when playing her are her two passives, her intro and outro skills. Thanks to her intro skill, Yang will be at her strongest within the first eight seconds after taking the field. Ideally, you'll want to have your hardest hitting combo ready and deployed within that window as a main or sub DPS while her outro skill batteries whoever takes the field after her, making her a fairly universal support, especially to energy-hungry teams. While her outro skill isn't a flat-out damage buff like Alto's, the bonus energy she provides does have a lot of value. For example, even though I have Alto, I have been playing her with my Jian and have been having a blast with consistent uptime on his ultimate. Verena is the third in our team, and with a 175 cost on her resonance liberation, that extra 20 energy is definitely welcomed. Yang has a couple combos available to her and can be used while in the support or DPS role. Do one full rotation of your basic attack to gain one stack of melody, followed by a heavy attack plus a basic to cast Zipher Song and gain the second stack of melody. From here, activate your resonance skill which gathered the targets and grants the final stack. Use one last heavy attack followed by a basic to cast Feather Release. Alternatively, you can perform two back-to-back -back Zaffir songs, which is the heavy attack followed by a basic. 
This will grant you two stacks from here. Use your resonance skill for the final stack. Use your charge attack to get the enemy's airborne followed by a basic to finish things off with feather release. Both of these combos can be shortened by using a basic attack after a successful dodge, because that will also grant a stack of melody. In the Tower of Adversity, where you start the encounter with all of your skills fully charged. We want to start by casting our ultimate, followed by skill into charge attack, into basic two times, into feather release. This will make sure we have our outrow skill available as soon as the first rotation ends, so the next unit taking the field will have their intro skill up and benefit from her energy recharge. Because she's a starter unit, we will likely be at the whim of RNG when it comes to getting her wave bands. That being said, she does get significantly better with them and is absolutely insane at RC6. Sequence 1, Sapphire Skies, Soaring Sparrows, will increase the bonus arrow provided by her intro skill by an additional 15%. Sequence 2, Nesting Twigs and Beaks They Harrow, will allow her heavy attack to generate an additional 10 resonance energy. Sequence 3. Nature Sings in Symphony increases the damage of her resonance skill by 40%, its effective range by 33%, and the potency of its gather. Sequence 4. Close Your Eyes and Listen In increases the damage dealt by the mid-air cast of Feather Release by a sexy 95%. Sequence 5. Winds Whisper in Harmony increase the damage deal by her resonance liberation by 85%. Lastly, Sequence 6, a tribute to Life's Sweet Hymn, increases the attack of all party members by 20% for 20 seconds after she cast a mid-air feather release, turning her into an absolute monster. May RNG be with you. Unfortunately for Young, she has the fifth lowest base attack stat in the game. So if you want to run her as a proper DPS, having a weapon like Emerald of Genesis would go a long way. Not only does it have the highest base attack of all the current swords, it also have a crit rate substats making it easier to build Yang. The passive also grants a 12.8% boost to energy regen, as well as a stackable 6% attack boost for 10 seconds whenever the resonance skill is released. This weapon can be obtained for free from the Union Level 45 reward box. Her second best option, Commando of Conviction, is another free weapon assuming you haven't used the weapon box already. It will increase her attack by 15% for 15 seconds after using her intro skill. Lunar Cutter and Lyman Gloss are serviceable options, but one is Gacha and the other is from the Battle Pass. But if you're just poor, then the three-star Sword of Night can be your flea market commando of conviction. For Echo Sets, we want to use Moonlit Clouds for support and the Sierra Gale for DPS. The Moonlit Clouds will provide a 10% boost to energy recharge with the two-piece and increase the attack of the next Resonator to take the field by 22.5% for 15 seconds with a full set. You can pair that up with the Impermanence Heron for a more potent support build. It will provide the current character with 10 Resonance Energy on hit, and if the current character uses their outro skill within the next 15 seconds after it was activated, the incoming character's damage dealt will be boosted by 12% for 15 seconds. For DPS, Sierra Gale will grant a 10% boost to arrow damage with the two-piece, and for the full set, increase arrow damage by 30% when the intro skill is used. You'll also want to run the Felian Berengal as your echo ability. After his follow-up hits, the current character's arrow damage increases by 12%, and the heavy attack damage increases by 12% for 15 seconds. Remember to follow the 4 3 3 one, one rule once your progression allows for it. With crit rate or crit damage on your four cost echoes, bonus arrow damage or attack on your three cost, and lastly attack on your one cost. On your substats, keep an eye out for crit rate, crit damage, energy recharge, and attack. When it comes to teammates, main DPS Young will definitely want to be in a team with Alto, 
equipped with the Moonlit Cloud's five-piece Echo Set. His outro skill will grant the next character to take the field a 23% arrow damage deepen for 14 seconds, in addition to the Moonlit Clouds effect. Your third can be either Baiji or Verena on the five-piece Rejuvenating Glow set. Not only will they keep Yang healthy, they will also buff the team's damage with both their outro skill and Rejuvenating Glow set. Like I mentioned before, she is a valuable asset to any energy-hungry teams. There are no elemental restrictions on her, so literally every character in the game will benefit from her energy recharge at RC0, and at RC6, she can put a base Verena out of business. In conclusion, Yang Yang is a character that players either adore or overlook. Despite her impressive moveset, her low base stats mean she's always at the bottom of every tier list. However, for those of us who prioritize waifus over meta, Yang Yang shines in both the sub-DPS and support role. A wise man once said, sometimes it's about enjoying the game with the characters you love, rather than just chasing pointless metas. Until we meet again, friends. Fruitado.